what we're trying to really get the point across is that we still have to start thinking like a scientist. And part of that is basically to come up uh, an approach to problems through a, in a rational way, in a methodical way, yes. that really kind of emphasizes this um, point of trying to sit back and think about what you're doing and trying to spend as much time planning what you're doing, planning what the results are going to be, what you're doing, rather than just kind of having a go and kind of trying this hit and miss approach. Okay. Experimentation is good, but just blind experimentation usually doesn't get you very far. I see. Now, when you were telling me about this before, you said something that I found really compelling. You were talking about your experience in... Biology, first year biology. biology. Yeah. Tell so essentially it was, the, ex the assignment was you were given these cell samples, these unknown cell samples, and you had to identify them in certain categories, either bacteria or like um, eukaryotes or plant cells or animal cells or fungi, or different yep. those sorts of things. And because you only had a very small amount of lab time, you only had very specific equipment, you were expected to come up with all the analysis you were meant to do, all the plans and the tests and all, all the logic behind that. You had to plan in advance so that by the time you came into the lab, you knew exactly what you were doing and exactly what you were going to look for and any anomalous results you could identify at that time and basically the time you spent at the microscope was much more efficient and much more coordinated. Yes, I see. So you planned in advance and you carried out the experiments and at the time of carrying out the experiments you had a, a very good plan of how, how yeah. it was going to go. And why do you think that's an advantage? Like what if someone said, yeah, but we don't have to do that in computing, so why should we? Well, the thing is, a lot of the time we don't, especially for simple problems, but as problems start become, they start becoming more complicated, and the results of whatever you're trying to do start becoming more ambiguous, it, you find that you, you do still need to do it. Because I think the thing about the human mind is we can find patterns in pretty much anything. If you just give us a random plot of data, you can probably try to make sense of it in some way. And similarly with scientific models, if you just have a collection of data and you're trying to fit some model to it, you can make your model as complex as you want. You can fit any data. So really, the only use of a model is to predict previously unknown sets of data. So in that sense, coming at this problem, this, uh, this classification problem. If you just go and start making experiments and taking numbers and taking ratios and numbers and then trying to say, okay, does this fit a certain sort? Does this fit a certain category of um, cells? You're usually going to self-justify whatever your preconceived notions are. Whereas at least if you come up with a formal way of analyzing that before you start and then you see how the data actually matches your expectations, it's much more truthful to does the data fit your model rather than are you changing your model or are you adjusting your model to fit your data? This is the difference a priori versus a. Yes. 